Welcome back. Well, supermoons and a lunar eclipse, they don't happen at the same time very often, but this is a chance for you to see both of those things, a memory making moment and a learning experience. And no one knows how to make learning fun like our friends at the Fleet Science Center. So this morning we have Julie Medina. She's gonna be showing us an experiment. She's the one waving right there. And then Dr. Lisa Will. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So Dr. Lisa, I wanna to talk to you first. You're the resident astronomer at the Fleet Science Center and astronomy professor for the San Diego Community College. Uh, tell us about this unique celestial event. What will be happening tomorrow morning? Well, tomorrow morning we'll be having a total lunar eclipse visible from here in San Diego. Uh, lunar eclipses happen when the moon is full and when the sun lines up directly in line with the earth and the moon so that the earth's shadow falls on the moon. Uh, tomorrow is also uh, a super moon, uh, which means that the full moon is happening when the moon is at its closest or is close to its closest point and its ellipse around the Earth. So the moon is a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter than usual. And you'll be able to see that in the full moon tonight. I love that because our video th was lining up exactly with what you were saying. So that hopefully will help people understand just how cool this is. The super moon, lunar eclipse, all of this lining up just right. And for us on the West Coast, we're lucky uh, as long as we are somewhere where the skies are clear. So what's going to be the best place and the best time to view this? Well, the eclipse will be happening tomorrow morning. Uh, the totality of it will be happening between 411 and 426 in the morning. So you need to be up in the morning. It'll be happen at, happening as the moon is setting over in the west. So you need a good view of the southwestern horizon. Uh, and so for those of us along coastal San Diego, we'll be competing with the marine layer. Yeah. But if you're in East <laughs> County, maybe with sort of an elevated location so that you have a good view of the southwestern horizon, you should be able to see it. Right, I've been asking our friends at the Weather Service all morning, uh, where, when should we see this? Some of them suggested maybe Ramona, but I like that you suggested looking towards the southwest sky where the moon will be setting. Uh, so, of course, this is a special occasion, uh, but it's also a learning experience. So let's bring uh, Julie in now over at Fleet. And you have a, a demonstration that you want to show us. Julie, what do you have going on there? Yeah, so this is a fun experiment um, involving the, the moon and lunar craters and how those are made. So that thing that makes it kind of look like Swiss cheese a little bit, uh, we're going to look at how those are made with stuff that you can use at home or that you probably have at home. So I've got a bin of flour here. Um, I made it nice and smooth on the top so that you can see a nice smooth surface. And then um, we've got a couple different things to drop into our bin of flour, which is always fun. So we're gonna take our rock here, which is gonna kind of simulate something kind of hitting the surface of the moon. And we're gonna drop that in. And then you can see that it has created kind of a little hole there. And then we're going to try to get it out without disturbing it as much as possible. Okay. This is a magnetic rock, and I've got a little wand here. So I'm going to try to get it out. I'm not sure if this wand is strong enough. There we go. It kind of is. <laughs> okay. Magnets so are tricky. <laughs> okay. We're going to get it out as easily as possible there. And then you've got your little lunar crater. Okay. And then you can measure that, drop them from different distances to see how the shape changes. You can try different things. So we're actually gonna try this marble as well. This is also a magnetic or metal marble mm -hmm. or ball bearing. We're gonna drop it from a different distance, a little bit higher this time. And then you can see it made a very different shape and very deeper? different depth than my other crater right there. So okay. this is a really fun one again to try at home with some pretty easy stuff that you probably already have around your house. Um, and so yeah, this is this is a really neat one that's uh, to do in conjunction with the cool event that's yeah. happening outside. Because we had someone from NASA earlier on our show and you know, he was talking about the moon. It's you're watching it evolve and change over the past several years. You know, they've been monitoring all the different craters and there's been new ones that we've witnessed. Uh, so that's a cool way to show kids, hey, this can happen by just one small, you know, pebble hitting a surface and <laughs> imagine on the moon yeah. how that happens. So that's really cool that you guys are doing this. Uh, of course, more information, Julie, where can people find all the details? Uh, on the website is always one of the better places to find our information or our programming. Um, so fleetsigns.org okay. online. Awesome. And then, Dr. Lisa, I do want to ask you, uh, you know, with tomorrow morning's big event, it does bring a lot of attention to our moon. Tell us why it's so important that we learn about this and what's happening on the surface there. 
Well, one of the things that I like to emphasize when I talk to people about our study of space is that when we're studying space, we're actually still studying ourselves. As we can see, if we can predict how craters look uh, by our understanding of how gravity pulls down a ball bearing into a bucket of flour, and it matches what features look like on the surface of the moon, then we actually are understanding that, okay, gravity works in multiple places. We have a bit of a better idea with the way the craters look, what our lunar surface is made out of, even before, even if we can't get there and actually dig up material right from that specific location. So our ability to observe the moon, we look at the moon in the infrared during a total solar eclipse and the way it glows, it tells us stuff about how the, what the different materials are on the surface of the moon. And so we can learn a lot always just by observing the moon, even though it's our closest celestial neighbor, we still have a lot to learn about it. We sure do. And yeah, the exploration continues thanks to, uh, you know, experts such as yourself. And uh, also real quick, Dr. Dr. Lisa, for people who are like, nah, I don't want to wake up early and see this, why should they? <laughs> You know, there is something really amazing about being able to look up at the sky and share an experience with the people around you. Right. Uh, the lunar eclipses are visible just with the naked eye. You don't need special equipment like telescope or binoculars. And so it's a chance to see an event in the sky just by going outside and looking up. Perfect. Dr. Lisa and Julie with the Fleet Science Center, thank you so much for being with us this morning. And yes, we will be up early to view that amazing <laughs> experience. All right. Take care, guys. We'll be right